Great. For those so, who got free tickets to the event, you are uh, supposed to clap more. Uh, <laughs> good. And now I would like to invite uh, Udi Mukadi, the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of CyberArk USA. His Malcolm lady insisted that I will say that the company is the best of the greatest of, and the most wonderful of, but I don't remember of what. So there Udi we will explain to us. Why don't Thank you bring you. your marketing lady uh, for me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Yossi. Thank you. Good to see everyone. And, uh, and after this great uh, panel, I'm honored uh, uh, to be here uh, and switch back to, uh, to cyber and uh, to talk about uh, identity as the new uh, attack, uh, attack surface. Uh, but, but pleased to be back at CyberTech and to see such a great uh, uh, agenda for, uh, for today. Uh, CyberArk, that's what we do. We live and breathe um, uh, identities and we conduct uh, uh, surveys on the matter and what we're seeing is proliferation of, uh, uh, of identities. Of course, with uh, digital transformation as was talked about uh, today, uh, the adoption of cloud, uh, we have more and more human uh, identities for every uh, uh, persona. Uh, but we also have a proliferation of machine identities. And actually, from a survey we found, uh, there are 45 times the amount of machine identities per uh, than, than the employees in a company. So imagine a company with 10,000 humans. They're going to have a lot of identities. But behind the scenes, applications and bots and systems all communicate to each other, application to application, using, uh, using secrets, using identities. Um, and uh, the concern uh, of organizations we surveyed Number one concern is credential theft, and definitely privileged credential uh, uh, theft. Uh, so while we always talk about uh, uh, identity is the new perimeter, and we definitely uh, believe in that uh, with, with the, with the uh, adoption of cloud and, uh, and work from anywhere, uh, what we're, we're talking about here today is identity is the attack surface. It's the holy grail uh, and, and really uh, benefits the attacker uh, in the attack uh, chain, and I'll talk about that, uh, uh, talk about that today. Uh, speakers before me really talked about some of the events of, uh, of the last year. Uh, I'm gonna, just going to go about this quickly. Uh, if you dissect uh, uh, the major attacks of the year, uh, and uh, Nadav talked about the Uber breach. I'm talking about the, actually the latest Uber breach, uh, and Cybark uh, analyzed it on our blog. It was all identities, uh, using MFA fatigue to get in, uh, leveraging credentials to move laterally, uh, eventually finding uh, privilege uh, credentials to take over uh, all, uh, all systems. Uh, a similar identity attack was, uh, was the attack against Okta. Uh, and ransomware was mentioned, and, uh, and countries affected by ransomware. And boy, there was one country that was really affected by ransomware, and that was Costa Rica. Uh, we have great friends and partners and, and, uh, and customers who told us about how devastating it was at the beginning of 22. Uh, to, be, to be affected by, by Costa Rica, uh, by, by ransomware in Costa Rica. And uh, it just shows you that the attackers don't just go uh, after organizations, they go after countries, and including small, uh, small countries. And they also, it's not a drive-by and we're not gonna come back. Uh, in recent months, we've seen attackers actually return, uh, uh, whether they're leveraging new ways in, like third party, uh, uh, using, using third party vulnerabilities uh, to get in, but attackers have revisited and came back for more in, in breached uh, uh, entities. Uh, so when we talk about uh, identity, or you're all familiar with the, the, the kill chain, the Lockheed Martin uh, uh, kill chain, um, uh, I wanna talk about the identity uh, uh, attack chain and how attackers are actually, whether they're on the inside or on the outside, uh, and, and how they first got in, uh, the method is really uh, to, to, steal, uh, to steal credentials, to get some form of initial access, and then steal credentials to move laterally, uh, whether it's laterally from workstation to workstation, uh, and then leveraging it vertically from workstation to server, uh, from workstation to cloud environments, from workstation to dev, uh, DevOps environments, uh, and then the attacker has the ability to really uh, go after uh, uh, the, the, the target itself, um, whether the intent was to uh, plant ransomware, whether it was to uh, uh, destroy, whether it was to set up a, a backdoor or, uh, uh, or, or exit with, uh, with data. Uh, credentials and identities are the attack, uh, the, in the attack chain and are the attack surface. 
Uh, Nadav and others before me uh, spoke about uh, the attackers are innovating. I have to tell you that at CyberArk, it's just something we bring to the room. We always talk about it. When we're planning, when we're uh, uh, researching, when we're developing, we always talk about the fact that you have to assume that the attackers are innovating, and they are innovating. And, and so uh, the, the, there was some mention today. I'll go over it quickly. There's business innovation. Uh, everything around the fact that you don't have to be a specialist in ransomware and you can really rent ransomware, you can get ransomware as a service and monetize and how they monetize uh, uh, on ransomware. Um, uh, everything on, on, uh, on now that you can buy identities and credentials. There's a whole market where you can buy that initial footprint to get uh, that initial footprint to a, a workstation uh, with, with, uh, with an employee. Um, and of course, they're also, that's the business innovation and there's of course the, the attack innovation more and more going after uh, uh, third-party uh, vulnerabilities as a means to get into one-to-many uh, types of, uh, uh, of attacks. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're seeing them uh, leverage new tools or, or tools that proliferated from nation states, are tools that are proliferating from nation states into the hands of attackers um, on, a, on, a, on a regular uh, uh, basis. And so obviously, that's what we do here. That's what we stand for. We have to combat their innovation with our innovation and be very pumped and positive about it because we can do that. Uh, so I want to give a few, uh, a few examples and also a few things to think about. Uh, ChatGPT was mentioned here earlier. I have to tell you, the researchers at CyberArk here in Israel, uh, about a week ago, just ahead of CyberTech, came out with breakthrough uh, uh, research that was published uh, worldwide and really got uh, uh, great attention. They were able to manipulate uh, ChatGPT not to write the school essay, not to cheat on, an, on, a, on a test, uh, but they were actually able to manipulate ChatGPT, and it's supposed to prevent that, uh, but to actually write polymorphic malware um, to, uh, that can evade uh, uh, endpoint uh, security uh, controls. And uh, uh, of course, modern endpoint uh, uh, controls uh, are not just tracking uh, signatures like old antivirus uh, was, but they're actually trying to track behavioral changes. But our researchers were able to ask uh, this, the, the generative AI uh, to create uh, uh, malware that would behave differently in trying to achieve the same task and to uh, 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 mutate uh, as it goes. Uh, and just thus, uh, the intent was not uh, for us to release uh, malicious code out there, but actually to prove that AI can be used easily uh, to, to create uh, uh, modern, uh, modern uh, attacks that can evade uh, uh, endpoint uh, 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 detection and response. Um, and that uh, there's a lot of meanings for that. A, we have to assume breach. We've always said that, that we have to assume even based on the amount of phishing successes when, when companies at, uh, attest their, their phishing response. We have to assume that uh, the adversary will make that initial footprint and, if they, 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 and that they can now use more and more tools to do that. Uh, secondly, you have to assume that AI will be used also for, for evil and of course that we have to take innovation as was said earlier here today. We have to innovate with AI to actually be more on the preventative side and on the protective side. Um, and again, breakthrough research from, from, uh, from CyberArk on, on this, uh, this matter. Uh, another topic I'd like to talk about is we have to uh, more and more uh, consider how we protect uh, uh, cookies. There's more and more sessions that start with the browser. Our employees are, uh, are remote. Um, and uh, as seen in, uh, in recent attacks like uh, uh, Circle uh, uh, CI, which is a, 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 de a, dev a DevOps tool, uh, was attacked, uh, where, where actually the attackers were able to land on an engineer's uh, 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 workstation and then leverage the session uh, uh, cookies that they, they, uh, the engineer had uh, to, uh, to basically hijack and bypass multi-factor authentication and just be that person, fully impersonate that person with access to systems, uh, the, the ability to then uh, use that person, that engineer's strong access, and they gave him, he was not in least privileged mode, um, they, they gave him strong access to get to the back end, into the dev, into the production uh, systems, um, and, and it triggered a, a whole response that also has to do with the fact that it's a CICD tool. And so uh, it, it affected uh, uh, many, many customers. Uh, and so cookies are another type of, uh, of, of credential and another type of, uh, of identity that uh, needs to be uh, uh, protected. Uh, and then uh, there's a lot of talk about passwordless. And uh, passwordless is always referred to the, the humans and how do we uh, help them uh, not have to remember uh, credentials. Uh, but there's the other side of it, and I talked about machines earlier, 45 times more machine identities than humans. Uh, how, how do we do uh, passwordless for them? 
And actually at Cyborg we call it secretless, managing that authentication, managing the, the communication between uh, applications and, and databases, applications in them, themselves, and managing those, uh, those machine, uh, uh, machine identities. Uh, so we have a bit of a, of a, of a perfect storm uh, with attacker innovation, with the, the growth of the uh, identity uh, as, as an attack uh, uh, surface. Uh, and that's what we, we focus on at Cyborg. Um, you all know us as the creators of PAM. Cyborg created privilege access management, the whole, the whole category. Uh, we took probably the hardest part in identity. How do we allow, how do we manage privilege access? How do we allow the right users uh, to have the right uh, access when they really have to do administrative and complex tasks? Uh, but in the last couple of years, Cyborg expanded to all identities. We also secure workforce, machine identities, um, and on, on top of, uh, of, of privilege access, least privilege on the endpoint, and we do that in one uh, uh, platform uh, that serves all of these types of users uh, and, uh, and identities uh, to access all types of uh, uh, resources. Uh, we, we talk about uh, borrowing the concepts from PAM, where we really put strong controls on that administrative user uh, and, and applying intelligent uh, privilege controls on all types of users and identities, but doing that in lightweight uh, uh, fashion so that uh, 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 customers can, can really ad adopt one platform for all types of, uh, of, of identities. We've been investing in that innovation uh, and making that one platform, but coming it to it after uh, evolving from the, the toughest problem, which is privilege access uh, management. You heard privilege escalation. It's in every uh, element of, of the major uh, attacks and why it's so important. Uh, so we wake up uh, uh, every morning at, uh, at CyberArk. Many of us wake up here in Israel uh, at, at, uh, at, at CyberArk with, with the mission uh, to really uh, be very impactful um, and, and protect uh, our, our, our customers uh, against cyber threats so they can really move forward and embrace uh, the digitization and, uh, and the digital uh, uh, and economy. And since we're here in Israel, um, I, I want to speak about, uh, and people talk about startup nation, uh, one of the things I'm very proud about in CyberArk is that we're an example of scale-up nation. I think that's, uh, uh, you'll see what we were trying to, uh, to say uh, over here about CyberArk, is that we went the long path. Uh, many of our customers said, privilege access management, identity security, it's mission critical. Uh, we want to know that we're partnering with a company that's here to stay, is gonna grow, invest, innovate. Um, and CyberArk, CyberArk went public eight years ago. We actually celebrated uh, eight years as a public company a few, um, a, a few months ago. And why is that important? Um, it's important because that gives you the ability to really think long, uh, do everything in a long-term perspective, uh, not have to, uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, I would say, adjust for, for a particular uh, shareholder and others. We're traded on NASDAQ um, and, uh, and established a, a, a durable uh, long-term uh, company that can invest in innovation, can acquire, and we've made about uh, seven or eight acquisitions over the years, many of them here, uh, here in Israel, so that we can both innovate and, um, and add functionality uh, to, uh, uh, to our platform. Uh, and in these eight years, uh, by a factor of six, we grew our uh, customer count. By a factor of six, uh, we grew our, uh, our head count uh, around the world. Um, and, uh, and, and also uh, continued to, uh, by a factor of six, our, our revenue and, and, uh, and, and sales and probably value by a factor of 10. Uh, but uh, a lot of it is here, uh, here in Israel. Uh, we, we have research center here in Israel. We, uh, two years ago, we expanded to Beersheba so that we have a, a research both in the center of, uh, of Israel in, in greater Tel Aviv area and in, um, in, in Beersheba, but also R&D that is now spread uh, around the world and employees that are, uh, uh, that are around the world. So I, I really believe that uh, as part of this conference is to talk about the role of Israel in cybersecurity, the role of how we can, uh, how we can impact and make a long-term uh, effect on customers that we can also build scale up uh, to be there for our customers in their journey and their journey to adopt cloud and others. And here it's the first time I'm doing this. This is a fun one for me. Um, uh, CyberArk uh, uh, sponsored a, um, uh, a, a local Olympian uh, uh, judoka or a, a judo. Uh, her, her name is uh, Agili. She's only 23 and uh, already participated and won uh, in, in the last uh, uh, Olympics. And for the CyberArk employees, they, they follow her. First of all, she's, she's, she's smart, she's hardworking, and she's humble, which we love. Um, and uh, for the CyberArk employees, it really represents a lot of things. It's kind of made in Israel. It's, uh, it's girl power. 
uh, she, and, and, and go-getter, um, and very mission-oriented. Uh, uh, and also in CyberArk, we do a lot, uh, as, as Dorit Bainish just talked about uh, uh, with Asaf, about, uh, about the role of uh, women in cyber. We do a lot of initiatives, both in hiring, both in, uh, in, in empowering uh, uh, women in cyber. Uh, our very own uh, uh, Karen Eldor, who, who's the VP of our Tech uh, Alliances, will be speaking today on the panel on the role of, uh, of women in cyber. I wanted to, to put up that, uh, that opportunity to, uh, uh, to share that with you. Now, how does that mission um, that, that we have here in CyberArk, how does it also manifest itself in terms of what it looks like in the market? Uh, so I mentioned to you that, uh, that CyberArk basically created uh, the magic quadrant, uh, created the category of privilege access management, which is the magic quadrant uh, you see on your, um, on your left and we're top on the right. Uh, as, as they're really uh, for the four years in a row since this quadrant, the Gartner quadrant was created. But also last year, I I, as I mentioned, we expanded to all identities and into access. Uh, last year, the quadrant on your right is the access quadrant and CyberArk moved up to the leader position. So basically out there, CyberArk is the only company that is a market leader in both Magic Quadrant for access and for privilege access uh, management. It's, it's a lot of work. As you saw in those photos, I had more hair eight years ago, although it could be an optical illusion. Um, and, uh, and so with that, bringing that both together, it really makes CyberArk the uh, identity uh, security company. And we, uh, as I mentioned, we wake up every day thinking about the attack surface, enabling our customers to do the, the digital uh, uh, transformation, uh, uh, seeing how attacks are, are evolving, and bringing something that is a protective layer, because we can be proactive against uh, against attacks and putting these pro pro uh, protective uh, uh, layers um, uh, so that uh, our companies can thrive and and move forward uh, so with that uh, appreciate uh, everyone here and thank you thank you, thank you.